Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. Guide us, we pray, by the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 9. Now, my subject this morning is what shall I do? What shall I do? Or what shall I do next? How many want to know what to do next? What shall I do or what shall I do next? Amen. Now, the first thing in what shall I do is to understand that we are in darkness. There's something called darkness. Do you get it? Yes. We, we, there's darkness. And what it says is that when you have a handicap, right, that you have lived with for a long time, you become used to it. And then you almost think that it's normal. In fact, if you don't, even if you don't think that it's normal, like that's normality for you. All right? So, one of the things you find is that people who are living in poverty and in difficulty, they are not feeling sad. I, I don't know if you know, if you know that. They are not sad. Though. Many people are rather very happy. You get it? Initially, you may think that people who are in poverty, difficulty, some people are living in various towns, villages, maybe far away from the capital cities in different countries, you may feel that they feel sad. Uh, when you go to places, you see the conditions under which people live. Uh, all over, even here, in, just in, right where we are. You think that people are sad. They are not sad at all. There are some people, when they open their door, the door, when they open the door and they step, that's the road. Like, if you don't look, a car will knock you immediately. Did you know that? Many, many houses. If you take a step, you are on the road there. Road, yes. Many of us don't have toilets at home. To go to the toilet, you must go out. Yes. And you go to the toilet. Then you come. Yes. Many don't have many things, but they are okay. Why am I saying what I'm saying? I'm saying that when you are in difficulty, you get used to it, and you don't know that you are in difficulty. So what I'm trying to say is that there is darkness in this world. In fact, we are actually in great darkness. We can't see so much. But we are used to it. So we say we are in the light. So John chapter 8 and verse 12. Famous verse from Jesus. Let's, maybe we should start with that. Jesus spake again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. Today my message is very short. I think about 30 minutes maximum. Yes. Then Jesus spake again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. 
He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In other words, that life can be lived without the light of this life. Like this life needs a light. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. This life needs a light. And the light of life, of this life, of what to do in this life, is in Jesus. So, I am the light. I, Jesus, I am the light of the world. He that follows me, Jesus, shall not walk in darkness. But what do you mean by walk in darkness? We are, we are seen. We are in the light. No, there is a type of darkness that is, uh, we, we can't see many things which exist. Yes. And many things which exist, all right, we can't see. And many realities that happen, we can't understand them or even know what is happening. All right. But if you follow Jesus, you will not walk in darkness, but you will have light for this life. How many want light for this life? Now, many times, uh, we don't realize that we don't know what to do. Yes. So, I'm sorry to mention again, but the submarine that went down, right? Well, because it captivated our attention. The whole world, we were all thinking about it, you know, and thinking that below, uh, I think, uh, what, a kilometer or so, there's no light at all. And they were going down to four kilometers. Uh, you understand four kilometers? Like, four kilometers is like, everybody, when we are going home today, check. Put your speed, your, your, or check on your speedometer if you, are, if you have a car and then check where, where you get to that is four kilometers. Yeah, that will show you how deep they went. I don't think from here to Tetequashi is four kilometers or maybe it's four kilometers. You can check on Google. Yeah, as a bird flies straight. Yeah, check, check it on Google. That's a bad price. Straight. 3.9. Uh huh. Yeah, but that's about four kilometers. As a bad flies, is it by bad flying or by roads? Or oh, by road? No. As a bad flies. It will be from here to Fiesta traffic light. Check as a bad flies. A bad fly is different from a car driving. Huh? Three. Yes, that's our crime on is three kilometers. Yes. Now, when they are under the water, it's like they are inside black oil. And they are not connected to anything. No. They are freely moving inside the black oil. Which is the way to go? Left a little, right a little down a little. If they are going down, then they meet the long part of the boat. Do you see? That the Titanic. They go and then they hit it. Then it chooks the propeller. You don't understand the message. Because the, the propeller that is moving it, it chooks it or it goes inside. Or maybe a cable inside the Titanic gets into the thing. No, honestly... Somebody's got to be crazy. <laughs> huh? And it takes one, uh, two hours. It takes two hours to go down, two hours to come up. You don't see anything. So that is black darkness. How do you navigate? And how do you know what to do? So the Bible is telling us that we are in something like that. 
I'll show you how you know you are in darkness. You see, when you come to a junction of your life, do you get what I'm saying? Let's say you finish secondary school. You see, fortunately, some, there are some things that after secondary school, go to university after university. When you come to some of those places where there's nothing clear after, like when you finish university, what shall I do? That's when you see that you are now looking for more courses to do. A lot of people who are doing master's, PhD, it's, it's really a lack of what to do. That's when you see that you are in darkness. You really don't know what to do at that junction. So what should I do? now? Okay, I'm doing uh, actuarial science. Or I'm doing uh, philosophy and classics. Or I'm doing accounting and Swahili in the university. So when you finish, what shall I do next? That's when you see that you are in darkness. Yeah, what, what I'll do? What you'll do? Swahili and accounting. This is it. Adult education, what will you do next? Or when the time comes for you to marry. And if you are not deep into a church, even those who are deep in church, it's not that easy. But if you are not deep in a church, you see that you are just moving around. And anybody that comes around, sleeping around, before you realize, you don't really know what to do. And you'll be doing a whole lot of things that you don't even really like doing. But there's nothing else to do. Today, Jack Toronto came. He said he loves you. Tomorrow, Bob, Bob came. Another time it was Kweku. Another time it was Joe. By the time you think they are 21. As you carry on, they are 42. As your beauty fades, they also reduce. What I shall do. So many of us don't realize that we are in thick darkness. And we need to have a screen. That is telling us what we shall do. What shall I do next in my life? What shall I do? So today, I want to show you. Now, so let's look at Isaiah chapter 9. I told you to turn to Isaiah chapter 9. Yes, I've not forgotten. Nevertheless, then dimness shall not be such as in her, was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. And how many don't understand? You are not supposed to understand. It's, it's, it's prophetic words. It's not everything that you understand. Okay? We will soon get to the part that you understand. <laughs> And afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. Wow. Verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. How many understand that part? The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. And they that dwell in the shadow, in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Amen. The people that walked in darkness. So, who are the people that walked in darkness? We! This is a prophecy of Jesus. It's also found in the New Testament. You, you find, I think, in Matthew, he prophesied, and when Jesus came on the scene, this verse was used to describe whom Jesus was. That the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. Let's look at verse 15 or something before. 
the land of Zebulun. No, go before that. Let's say 12. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the people, that's the, the land of Zebulun, exactly quoting the land of Zebulun, all right, and Naphtali, all right, have seen, and by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, verse 16, have seen a great light. Amen. All right? So, Jesus was this great light. All right? And um, a great light begins to show that great direction has come. Actually, they were even speaking about John the Baptist also. And so on. So, Jesus, forerunner, John the Baptist and so on. They, Jesus was a great light. Light, light, light. So when you have Jesus in your life, you start to have direction. What I shall do. Tell your neighbor, what I shall do with my life. Wow. Yes. What I shall do. What I shall do with my life. Amen. Lift your hand and say, what I shall do. What shall I do? Amen. 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 So God wants to tell you what to do next with your life. Can I have an amen? amen. Wow. Now, Through this message that I'm sharing with you now, you are going to know what to do. Amen. How many want to know what to do? Wonderful. Now, Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Everybody say, what I shall do next. Now, how many have ever wondered what should you do next with your life? Uh, all those on that side, they know everything. I think maybe you can go outside because you know everything already. I don't even know why you are here. Okay. Now, what shall I do? And this is the answer. The answer is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord is so powerful that it has many names. Many, many names. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter 15 and verse number 1. And after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. The word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Amen. And thy what? I am thy what? Shield and thy exceeding great reward. Verse 2. Verse 2. And Abraham said, Lord, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. <laughs> I don't think he was so happy with her. Eliezer of Damascus. Okay, so what, what shall I do next with my life? Do you get it? The answer is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord will tell you what to do in every situation. Amen. Do you believe it? Yes. Now, either the written word or the spoken word. Either of the two. 
But many, many things are based on what we already have as written. So your life, I'm telling you what to do next. What to do next is based on the word of the Lord. So when Abraham got to this point in his life, okay, look at it. And that is where everybody comes to this point in life. And the Lord said to him in a vision. See, the word of the Lord can come in a vision. Not necessarily what is written, but it can come in a vision. And the word of the Lord came to him in a vision, saying, don't be afraid, Abraham. Abraham had family problems. Abraham had family problems, but Abraham was really dedicated to God. Really. In fact, you rarely find, when you say Father Abraham, you rarely find anybody like Abraham. And that's why God made him so great. You know, Abraham was ready to leave his family. In Genesis chapter 12, he left his family. The the Lord asked him, leave your folk, kinfolk, and people that you know, eh, out your country, your kindred, your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I mean, for God's sake, he was ready to leave his family. His country, huh? his country, he was ready to relocate for God. Uh, and from his kindred, are you seeing this verse? And from his father's house. Then later in life, he was ready to drive out his firstborn son. His firstborn son was Ishmael. He drove him out for the sake of obeying God. He should go. I mean, that's serious. Firstborn. Then later on, another son, he was ready to kill him too. (laughs) I mean, this kind of dedication is not common. I don't know whether you are, you are seeing how wild Abraham was. I see he's a very wild person. And he was ready to go climb mountains as an old man on a mission. Most of us, if we announce the Israel, Israel trip, you see that people say, I can't walk. You can't walk, you can't walk. And me, I'm not going with people who can't walk from here to here. I'm telling you in advance. All this type of whatever. No, 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 no. Because that is not that is not that Israel. You can never enjoy Israel in that way. You have to take a bus from here to here, here, here. No, no, no. Yeah, it's walking. If you can't walk, don't come. Yeah. Now, but Abraham was ready to go mountain. He was going, he said, go to the mountain. Mount Moriah to obey God. And he went for three days of mountain climbing. Hmm. So when you call your child Abraham, you've got to be serious. You must know what, who you are naming him after. When you say, my son will be called Abraham. Hmm? <laughs> Somebody's got to be serious. So Abraham, Abraham said, Lord, what will you give me? So you see, now direction is coming into your life. What I shall do next. What I shall do next. Now, what you shall do next is to follow Jesus. Now, following Jesus is the master key to the greatest breakthrough for somebody in your condition. What is your condition? What is my condition? Your condition is the condition 
of, excuse me to use the word, a mere sheep. That's not the word I was going to use. Useless sheep is what I was going to use. <laughs> we are sheep. Are you not a sheep? Sheep of his hand. Psalm 95. We are the sheep of his hand. That is all that you are. So all you need is to hear the voice of the Lord to know which way to go. Now, when you hear this lovely voice, okay, of the Lord guiding you, everything is going to change. Father Abraham has got a serious problem. Serious. He said, you give me, I'm going childless. This man, in the eyes are, he's going to inherit every, every, all my things. <laughs> what is the use of my riches? My life is useless. And Abraham said, behold, thou hast given me no seed. Eh? And one born in my house is mine heir. This is a God was about to give him the solution and what I shall do. What I shall do leads you to Psalm 23, verse 1. Are you ready for Psalm 23, verse 1? Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. And what is the effect of the Lord is my shepherd? I shall not want. Yes. I shall not want. I shall not want. Many difficulties that come in our lives wanting of many things is because of not following the word of the Lord, whether it was through a vision or from the Bible or whatever. And also not realizing that I need to have a word from the Lord, okay, to know what I shall do next. What I shall do next? What I shall do next? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. If the Lord is your shepherd, what's going to happen? Lying down in green pastures. Wow. Still waters. I see you drinking Coke from the still waters of a swimming pool. Still, a swimming pool, is it not still waters? Next time you are by a swimming pool, just start, relax and say, Lord, these are still waters. You'll be there practically. Verse 3. He restores my soul. All your mental problems. Your soul is your emotions, your mind, your will, those invisible parts of a man which you can't, I mean, hold with sand. Those parts. He restores it. He restores it. By only simply the Lord is your shepherd. He restores all those things that affect you. This morning during the flow service, I was talking about, uh, I saw the Lord and he delivered me from all my fears. When you get a chance, listen to that part. It's very important for your life. I mean, this is the effect of the word of the Lord. So Abraham's soul was being restored. Yeah. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Verse 4. Only fantastic things happen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Because in this world, uh, because of the curse. You see, there are some things which cannot not happen. It cannot not happen. It has to happen. Because the curses and the blessings are sometimes from before you. So what you do is not going to change what will be. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. What you do is not, what's going, to, it's not going to change. That's why sometimes things, sometimes things look mixed up. You don't know if God is answering prayers or whether he is even alive. Yes. But it's because there are many things. I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me. 
thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Comfort me doesn't mean he solves the problem. He comforts you. He didn't say he solves it. He comforts you. Because there are many things, it's not you. You, you can't change it. I always remember Kenneth Hagin when he was praying for his son-in-law. His son-in-law was dying. And he said the Lord appeared to him or the Lord spoke to him and said, you can't change it. You can't change it. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 6 of verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Another fantastic paradox. Because everybody would like to not have enemies. And everybody would like to not have somebody who hates you. Yes. But unfortunately, or you can't change it also, enemies are present. Even in Psalm 34, he speaks about those who hate you. In Psalm 34, at the end. So, you can't help it. But God is saying, by his word, by his word, he will comfort you. Yes. Psalm 34 verse 21, it says, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. People who hate the righteous shall be desolate. They will become desolate. You can't change it. He said, because of the anointing in Psalm 89, I will plague them that hate thee. Or the King James says, I will afflict them that hate thee. So, following the word of the Lord gives you an understanding of many things that are in life and what to do. Then he says, thou anointest my head with oil. When you follow the Lord, you'll be anointed. Verse 6. Ah, surely. So this is something we all want to hear. Goodness and mercy shall follow me on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Easter time, Christmas, on your birthday, and your wife's birthday. No. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord on Fridays, on Sundays, on Mondays, on Wednesdays. When will I dwell in the house of the Lord? Forever. So what I shall do is to hear the word of the Lord in every situation there is the word of the Lord. It may already be written because it's already there. Or it may be something that comes as a fresh vision. What I shall do is follow the word of the Lord. Amen. Verse 4 of Genesis chapter 15. And the word of the Lord came and said, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Therefore what? Continue to having sex because it's coming out of your bowels. It, it is it is like a, a, a instruction. It will come out of your bowels. Be on it. Hey! I see some diplomatic people. I don't know what is a kind of a, this type of respectability center. This is the first love center. Hmm. Be on it. It's going to come out of your bowels. Out of your where? Bowels. 
Bowels. Hey, Charlie. Amen. Now, Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9. Verse 13. Everybody say, what I shall do. Tell your neighbor, what shall I do? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Today you are getting a major guiding post for your life. Believe, oh, look, I'm telling you, we are all in the submarine trying to see where to go next. Oh. You got to have a screen. And you have to trust it. Yes. Look, how many want to be pilots? You don't want to be a pilot. Do you know, do you know that the planes, the aer aeroplanes, eh, the, some of the new ones, do you see the ceiling here? When you are in the plane, it is three stories high when you are in the a certain part of the plane. It's three stories high. It's as high as this. You can't really see the ground or measure. So when the pilot, you see they even drive, they drive the plane on a yellow line. And the, it's always exact because it has to be exact. Because when it gets there, the door is at exactly that place. You, you can't, uh, this is not always around. You guys are just whatever. This is not like that. <laughs> So when you are high up there, how do you see? They, they look at instruments and they, they have to believe. They have to believe the instruments. Otherwise, you cannot, you cannot operate it. When, when the plane is coming, your head is high and the back of the plane is coming down. They have it even sometimes the, 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 the thing will even say 200 meters, 180 meters. It speaks 150 Hundred, fifty. They, they know that they are about to touch the ground. Fifty, twenty, ten. Then they, you, you can't see the oh yeah. By now the the, the plane is the, the way it feels. The way it feels is is about no. You can't do that. <laughs> you have to trust in the. You have to trust in the screen, and you have to trust in the word. And you have to trust in the thing that you have trusted. Yes. That's how to be a pilot. You people, you are being educated. Last time I was teaching you how to be a judge. Yes. You know, there was a plane crash. KLM and Panam on Tenerife Island. It was one of the biggest air crashes in the world. So many people died. I think KLM was on the ground and Panam was taking off and there was, uh, there was like fog. So they couldn't see. And you know some countries have a runway going and coming is the same lane. Hmm? Uh, you know some countries like that. Ah, I don't know which countries are like that. Going and coming is on the same lane. Yes. So, so what happened was that the KLM was going to where you, you turn around and come this way. But Panam was already there. So Panam was coming. Are you listening? So when the Panam was coming this way, the, the KLM people saw that, this guy, is he crazy? He's coming straight to us. Somebody's got to be crazy. So he turned the plane off the runway. Do you get it? And tried to go off the runway as this huge plane too was also coming. But what happened was that the wheels of the Panam struck the the back of the KLM, do you see? 
And so the panam came down because it was balancing to go. And it was fully loaded. Both of them were fully loaded. So the panam, I think, I think everybody died. But the KLM, I'm telling you this for a reason. The KLM, those in first class, they were at the front. So they were in front. So people were saying that, hey, the first class that they paid for, it saved their life. <laughs> you get it? So the first class people moved out and then the back was up. So what happened was that when they finished, when the crash happened and the whole thing was burning, I think the pilots and some people, they were at the front. Now, how to come out? So they have to jump from three stories to the ground. That's, what I, that's what, how I know that it is very high. Because of that crash, I always remember that they were, they were from three stories high to the ground. Yes. So you can't be at three stories high and say, I feel we are close. How many want your pilot to be saying, I feel we are close? Somebody's got to be crazy. We, listen, we need the word of God to accurately tell us what to do all the time. You can't listen to something at the point, then at the point you don't follow the rules. So the word of God is going to tell us exactly what we should do. Amen. I told you to turn to Exodus chapter 9, verse 13. Are you there? Now, the word of the Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning, stand before Pharaoh, and say, thus says the Lord God, let my people go that they may serve me. You see, now this is what is supposed to be done. What God says, the word of God, what God says, the word of God, that is what should be done. All right? For I will at this time send all my plagues, and you will know that there is none like me. There is none like me. Okay? For now I will stretch out my hand and smite thee and thy people with pestilence. Thou, thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed for this cause I have raised thee up to show in thee my power that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Verse 17. And as yet, exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou will not let them go. Verse 18. Behold, tomorrow about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as not been seen in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Verse 19. Send therefore now and gather thy cattle. He said, get your cows. Chale. And all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field shall not be brought home. The hills shall come down upon them and they shall die. Now, for a cow to die, eh? it's not a small thing. You see? One day I saw somebody, his car was almost condemned. I said, what happened? He said, oh, I crashed into a cow. You must never crash a cow. When you see a cow, eh, slow down, and then if necessary, stop. They are very strong. It is your car that will get spot and the car. And so I asked him, did the cow die? He said, no, it just walked away. He just walked away. And there, he had the body work. The whole car was destroyed. So for this hail to kill the cows, it means that the, cow, the, the type of rocks that were coming to the ground were not going to be small rocks. Now, listen to the next verse. Verse 20. Now, he that feared the word of the Lord, among the servants of Pharaoh, made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. He that did what? 
feared the word of the Lord. He that feared the word of the Lord. You see, not everybody fears or respects. Change diversion. It's not everybody who fears the word of the Lord. So it's not everybody who has the direction of the Lord. It's not everybody who fears the word of the Lord. Like when we say, the Bible says, put the Bible aside. Put the Bible aside. When he said, but the Bible says, don't mention the Bible says now. Don't mention, this is not time for the Bible says. Yes. He that feared the word of the Lord. Many people say, but this person did it, nothing happened to him. This person did it, nothing happened to him. This person did it, nothing happened to him. So, I'm going to do it. That's how the, the word of the Lord, the things are mixed up because some people are doing certain things and the blessing of the Lord is on them or the call of God is on them in a certain way. So certain things may either come later or they won't come at all. I don't know. Yes. Why do you think both Moses and Aaron criticized? Moses and Aaron criticized. Aaron and Miriam criticized Moses. Aaron didn't get leprosy. Both of them spoke. The Bible says Aaron and Moses, Miriam and Aaron, Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. Numbers 12 or 1, verse 1 or 13, verse 1. Yeah. Miriam and, uh, and uh, Aaron. Yeah. Numbers 12, 1. Miriam and Aaron spake. They both criticized his marriage. And then verse 2, and somebody is working is slow. Somebody is working there is slow. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not also spoken by us? And the Lord heard it. Verse 3, and the cloud appeared. And Miriam, although it was Miriam and Aaron, Miriam alone became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam. Oh! <laughs> Her co dealer in the issue. Eh? She did became white. Oh. Meanwhile, Aaron also has skin. And Aaron did nothing happen to Aaron. Yes, but they all died in the same chapter in the Bible. Yeah. Aaron looked and said, Yeah. But you see, maybe the call of God on his life as a priest and all that, may have, God may have said, you know, are you, hold on. <laughs> I'll come to deal with you later. Or I don't know, I'll deal with you in heaven. The Bible says some men's sins come before. And others, their judgment comes later. It's mysterious. The judgments of God are mysterious. This is what provokes men to be brazenly bold and not to fear the word of the Lord. This is why some people don't fear the word of the Lord. Because it's like 10 people will smoke. Only three will get cancer. Why shouldn't we smoke? That's why people smoke. These days they print the cancer. They take pictures of cancer and put it on the cigarette box. Eh? They actually put pictures of lung cancer and whatever and say smoking causes cancer. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And put it on the box. People say, give me three. <laughs> give me four boxes. Tosca for men. Five, five, five. So Exodus says, those that feared the word of the Lord. Those that what? Feared the word of the Lord. Some people even say, oh, who is the father? What is it? What nonsense father? I have only one father. It's not true. 1 Corinthians 4.15 says, though you have 10,000 instructors, you don't have many fathers. 
many fathers. You have a number of fathers. Paul wrote to Timothy, my son Timothy. All through the Bible, we see my son, my son, my son, my son. Yes. It is real. And when you even want to say the person is not your son, it's your son. If you say this person is not your father, it's your father. Yes. So, but there are people who don't fear the word of God. My father and so what? Ah, is he not a human being? When he was doing this and that and that, who, who said anything about it? He want to tell me this and that and what about this and that? So people, it, it depends on you. But today I want you to become somebody who fears the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord is for your good. What I shall do next. It's right there. What I shall do next for your life, for your school. Let me tell you something. I believe that the word of God can guide you. The word of God can guide you. The word of God can guide you after school, whilst in school, during school, in life, in every situation. The word of the Lord, it is there. It is there. And you should ask yourself, what I shall do next now? And do it. They that feared the word of the Lord. Wow. Are you still around or you are leaving? Verse 21. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his cut his servants and his cattle in the field. Huh? And what happened? Verse 22. So there was hail, and the hail was very grievous. Verse 25. And the hail smote, and all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb, and break every tree of the field. Verse 26. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. Amen. Clap for the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 15. Verse 27. Numbers chapter 15, verse 27. Are you listening? If any soul sin through... Listen, what is, the, what is the title of this message? What shall I do next? Yes, what shall I do next? What shall I do next? Years ago, I heard the Holy Spirit saying to me, from today you can teach. What shall I do next? I will be a teacher. Then one day I heard the Lord saying, give thyself holy from my Bible. It was written. And I respected it. I regarded it. And I gave myself holy up till today. That's why I say, I've been a Christian for so many years, serving the Lord and working in the church. Don't be worried. You are not in darkness anymore because you are receiving the light of this life, what you shall do. Only that people don't fear the word of the Lord. That is all. Now, verse 27, Numbers chapter 15. Beautiful. If anyone saw, we are reading scriptures, it's good, a good thing. If any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. Now, that's not quite easy because a she-goat is going to give birth. 
and she's only one year old. So it's very healthy. Verse 28, and the priest shall make atonement, and it shall be forgiven him. Verse 29, you shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born of the children of Israel and for the stranger. Verse 30, are you with me for verse 30? But the soul that doeth ought presumptuously, all right, not out of ignorance, but out of Presumption. Presumption is a type of pride. It's like I don't care. I don't care. He said, the soul that doeth all, because you can sin out of ignorance. You don't know. You see, there's a difference between a sin. Look at verse 27. A sin out of ignorance. Look at it. Sinning out of ignorance. Most people who are abused sin out of ignorance. The reason you are doing this is you don't even know what you are doing. You don't even know what you are doing. Then you graduate from doing a sin out of ignorance to presumptuousness. Presum if you are with somebody who is presumptuous, you realize that you are with somebody who is proud. Presumption is pride. Like the person is presumptuous. So let me, let me, use, your, let me use your car. Or let me, so I'll, I'll just sit here. Is that, is that where it's at all? It doesn't matter. You know, it, it, it's pride. Yeah, presumption. What is presumption in the dictionary? I hope somebody is fast. Uh huh. Full of presumption. Presuming, overconfident, audacious, rash, taking liberties, unduly arrogant, insolent. Yes. Beautiful. You were fast today. Yeah. Taking liberties. Taking liberties you shouldn't take. Now he said, the soul that sins out of presumption, all right, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproaches the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Hey, I don't care. I don't care. Whatever. Hold. Oh, waiting. I don't care anymore. As you are fornicating, and you don't care anymore, I don't care. This is the 19th boy, I don't care. Yes, I don't care. You care. In the end, you care. Now, why is that guy who sins out of pride, but not out of ignorance, he didn't do it because he didn't know. He did it presumptuously. He says in verse 31, because he has despised the word of the Lord. He has despised the word of the Lord and had broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. So notice from verse 30 to 31, he's saying that when you sin out of your pride, that is, you, you know, not that you are ignorant. He said, that soul that doeth presumptuously, whether he was born in the land of a stranger, it doesn't matter. That soul shall be cut off. Because, verse 31, because he has despised the word. He, he doesn't respect the word of God. Yes. Now, you see, when you are a Christian, you have to have a great respect. If it's written in the Bible, no, you hold on. If the Bible says this, you fear. Even if you sin out of weakness, it's also a different thing. But you have to have that fear of the word of the Lord. God said, then you believe it. God said, you can't despise. All those people said, I don't care. Don't talk to me. Nobody advise me. No one should say anything. The Bible says that the one that does it presumptuously, you know what is right, then that soul shall be cut off. Now, what shall I do next? At least you can see some barriers. You can see some, not here, not here, not here, not here. Watch out for those who presumptuously despise the word of God. Their end is sure. So your, your life will be guided beautifully 
by God's word. That's what I say. The message is entitled, what shall I do next? I've finished school. What shall I do next? I've seen 42 girls that are beautiful, similarly beautiful. There are 42 that I have on my, on my phone. What shall I do next? Ah, uh, the word of the Lord says, beauty is vain. Hey. Immediately there is guidance. Those of you who follow beauty. The Bible says beauty is vain or is useless. So when you follow beauty, you follow uselessness. Because marriage is to a personality. It's not to the body. Yeah, you marry a personality. You will live with a personality. The body, you, you'll be used to it almost in some two hours. You'll be used to the body in, within two hours. By two hours, this one has gone to the toilet. This one has come back. This one has done this. This one has gone. I mean, less than 40, uh, two hours, since 120 minutes. You see that, ah, male and female created in them. You see that you have, you have come to you know, a creation level. But now you are living with a personality. And how that personality is. It's what you live with. If the person is loaded with fears, ah, you get all the seven characteristics of fears that I shared this morning at the flow. You'll be living with all of them. If the person is loaded with lusts, you'll be living with it. You think you'll be faithful. Within one month, he has spotted people that he's, he's looking for. Are you listening or you are about to leave? You are marrying a personality. That's why we spend a lot of time talking about temperaments during the marriage counseling because that's what you marry. If the person is phlegmatic, look, he will like sleeping, he would not like moving, he's not going to take decisions. That is what you are marrying to. That's what you are. My better, you know it. You want to change something God has made. God has created it. You. You are coming to change it. Somebody's got to be crazy. You are coming to change a personality. That's why when people employ, when you employ someone, you are actually employing a personality. Forget about what the person learned in school. You know, one day I saw some medical people, they were eating with flies. When they eat, then the food will come, then the flies will come. I said, ah, you didn't, learn, you didn't learn anything at school. But I realized that the personality of the person is greater than what the person learned in school. So the medical knowledge about the diseases that a fly can bring about more than 30 different diseases. It doesn't, has not entered the person's soul. The hunger for the kenke and the fish and whatever is more than the education. The personality is deep. Ask your neighbor, which personality are you married to? Those of you who are falling in love, you saw the person. Wow, what a shiny beauty. I see a beauty over there in the corner there. Wow, yeah, look at the person. Wow. Somebody's got to be crazy. Hmm. All right. Now, Numbers chapter 22. Numbers chapter 22. Now, the children of the Lord of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore, afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab said, let's go and see Balaam. Verse 6. Come now therefore and pray. He, he saw Balaam. He sent messages to Balaam and said, 
I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. One of the things that a curse does, it, it weakens people. So he said, curse them, they are too mighty. Per adventure that I may prevail, that we might smite them. For I wot that he whom thou blessed, blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursed is cursed. So there are some people who, when they bless, is blessed, and when they curse, it is cursed. Now the elders of Moab came with the rewards of divination, and they came to Balaam. And they said, Lodge here this night. I will bring you word. I'm going to speak to God. The Balaam, the Balaam was, the, was the wizard of that area. Or, or kind of a, either a false prophet or a semi-prophet. No one really knows who Balaam was. Because he seemed to also be praying to God. He seemed to have power. And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me saying, Behold, there is a people. Cast them for me. I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. So a curse brings defeat and humiliation. And Balaam rose in the morning. And God said to Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. You shall not curse the people. Don't, don't say anything. For they are blessed. Amen. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said to the princes, Go back to your land, for the Lord has refused to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab went back to Balak. There's Balak and there's Balaam. Don't be confused. Balaam is the prophet and Balak is the king. Don't be confused. So they came to Balaam and said, That says Balak. Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee, for I will promote thee with great honor. I will give you money. Huh? I will do whatever thou sayest. Look at verse 17. Are you looking at verse 17? I will do whatever thou sayest unto me. Come, come, I pray thee, curse these people. Curse them. All that he wanted was a curse. Ah, you see? People don't know the effect of curses and blessings. But these people, they really just, I don't want anything, just curse them. Now verse 19, I want you to see verse 19. That's why I brought you all the way here. And Balaam... And, oh, verse 18, sorry, verse 18. And Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, eh, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God I, to do more or less. I cannot go. If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of God. Whether less or more, I won't. I can't. If you give me a house full of gold, I'll never go outside the word of God. I'll stay within the word of God. You see, this must be your respect for the word of the Lord. Yes, your, your lack of fear for the word of the Lord is the cause of your crisis. It's true. Your crisis are multiplying. So we say, pay tithes. Oh, don't mind these pastors. They are whatever. Look at the benzes they are driving and so on. Sorry. Sorry for left. I cannot go beyond. Beyond. The word of the Lord, I'm sorry. What you are telling me is outside the word of the Lord. You must have a genuine fear. That's why you see the scriptures, it says, those of the servants of Moses that did not fear the word of the Lord, they, they went to work normally, say, oh, oh this one, whatever. <laughs> those who don't fear the word, so, shall it slow, flow, we'll just sleep. Ah, wait, I mean, I, one of my pastors, he said, I mean, what is this unreasonable hour that you are letting people pray at that reason? A pastor, ordained pastor in Lighthouse. 
He said, ungodly hour of uh, praying. You see, you are not bringing yourself a blessing. You see, be careful. Be careful. That's why I said that. Amongst the servants of God, there are those who fear and those who don't fear. Even Balaam, he knew, he said, I can't go beyond. Give me a house full of gold and a house full of silver. Look at the verse. And Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, my God, to do less or to do more. I cannot do that. I cannot do that. It's beyond the word of the Lord. Are you still around? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, the word of the Lord is guiding you. All right? And the word of the Lord is going to be your great guidance in every what is this my iPad is confused can you believe it wow it doesn't want us to continue Eish. You see, if you are in a submarine and the screen starts to do this, eh? Chili. <laughs> people are bold, though. like people go on missions, serious missions. Let's look at Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter 1. Wow. Now, after the death of Moses, amen. Are you there? After the death of Moses, okay? All right. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua. You see, one of the other times where you, people don't know what to do is when somebody dies, especially a father. Because when there is a strong father, they are used to hearing, do this, do this, do this, do this. So, when you talk of darkness, the darkness increases. You see, if you close your eyes, can you close your eyes? Close your eyes, then cover your, hand, uh, cover your eyes with your hand. Has the darkness increased? Uh -huh. Take off your hand, but keep your eye closed. Has the, has the darkness lessened? Uh -huh. So darkness is in levels. Yes, darkness is in levels. And darkness increases at certain moments in life, especially crossroads, junctions. What I shall do? What shall I do? I finished. Okay, I finished my masters. I finished my PhD. I finished my SS. I finished this. I did it. What shall I do next? Aha. Uh -huh. Darkness is in levels. So when Moses died, I'm just trying to show you different scenarios. When Abraham didn't have a child, at each junction of life, what I shall do. When it comes to the church, 
what I shall do. Always, there will always be the word of the Lord that's either already written or that he will speak to you somehow. So your, your main thing must be get to the word of the Lord all the time. That's, that's what's important. That is the light of life. That's the light of your life. Yes. You ask me, how do we get here? How do we get here? You know, we keep on moving on. The pillar of fire by night. Pillar of that. I, one of the things I know is that God is always moving. So keep moving. Keep, don't stay in one spot. Keep moving on. It may be the same thing, the same order, but there's always movement. So you will notice that the ministry always looks as if it's just starting. That just starting is the sign of, you see, when somebody, I remember one time I was on an Air France flight, and one of the passengers just across, you know, there's the window on this side, I was sitting on the right side, and then on the other side, they kept announcing, is there any doctor, is there any doctor, is there any doctor, and I said, okay, look, me, I'm sleeping, or they should call, they should find a, a doctor, because I'm from a crusade, I was sleeping, but they kept announcing, 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 so I, I got up, I'm here, I'm here, I own up. Okay. So they said, please, can you come and see someone? He was sitting in a chair like that. A white man on his way to Paris. He was dead. Yeah. Now, the sign of the death, do you see, was that there was no movement. He was sitting like this. You see, a lack of movement and motion is the sign that there's no life. So in your life, and as you follow the spirit, there's, there's always more. People are afraid of changes. People are afraid of movement. People are afraid of, let's do this now. Let's do this now. Don't be walk by fear. It's rather the sign, the spirit of God. One of the names of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. Is somebody listening to me? Oh, yes. So, my dear friends, you know, whether it is you don't have a child, what am I doing with my inheritance? What am I doing with my life at this junction? Now, Joshua also got to a place. His master, Moses, was gone. What I shall do. And after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. It came to pass, and it will always come to pass, that the word of the Lord will be spoken to you. When the darkness increases in your life, remember, there is the word of the Lord to be spoken to you. You must seek for it. You must read, read your Bible. Read your Bible every day. Read your Bible every day. You see, God will speak to you. Pray, God will speak to you in visions, in dreams. Or in the preaching, what you should do. What I shall do. What I shall do. This morning I was preaching at the Flow Church. When I read Job 29, when he said, The ears of them that heard me blessed me, and the eyes, when they saw me, they they gave witness, Job 29. It's something that guides me. Because he was describing the things he had done. How he had blessed people. And the ear heard me, blessed me. And the eye saw me. It gave witness. And verse 12. It guides me. That's why, that's why we are building the, the hospital on ice. You know, one, one, somebody told me, said, she went to India and there was a hospital that was set up by an NGO. And because of that, the cost was so low that a very wild, high-tech surgery, they did it at a certain much reduced cost. I thought, that's a blessing. Till you see one. 
Then he said, because I delivered the poor that cried. And the fatherless, I was kind to the poor. He was talking about his good old days. He, he was explaining why he doesn't know why God is punishing him. <laughs> he was listed. Job 29 is a list of all of Job's good works. Maybe you don't know. You know the chapters in Job. Chapter 1 is describing his glory as an Asian. And 29 is describing his good works that he did. That he himself says, this is what I was doing. That he doesn't see why he should be going through what he's going through. Look at it. I delivered the poor. And the fatherless that had none. I was a father to fatherless people. I was a father to many people. Verse 13. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. One time I think I was in Navrongo. And I was a sort of stunned. When they brought, in the welcome party, they brought a widow's ministry to come and sing for me. Only widows. Only widows. It was somebody who has a ministry for widows. A large group of widows. Kiss. This is all that the person does is to look after widows. God bless her. He said, I caused the widows to sing. Yes. The blessing of him that was ready to perish was upon. So these verses teach us what to do. The Bible is full of guidance on what to do next. And we are about to start one of the biggest compassion projects. I don't want to say it yet that we have ever embarked on. You'll be amazed. Oh, yes. Yes. How many want to join so that we do it? Yes. Huh? Are you listening to me? Oh, yes. Expect a word. Joshua was now receiving. Look at it. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Okay, read Joshua chapter 1. My, 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 my thing is jamma, my screen. Verse 2. Verse 2, verse 2. He said, Moses, my servant, he said, go over Jordan. Oh, thank you, Lord. That is what I should do. I should go over Jordan. Go over Jordan. Go over Jordan. Doing all these people. Okay. Verse 3. This is direction. Every place that your foot, your foot treads, I've given it to you. Me to this day, any land I go into, I walk as the Lord. As I've walked here, I thank you. You have done it. Every land the Lord is giving to you, receive land. Receive properties. Receive grace. In the name of Jesus. This is what to do. You don't know what to do. Verse 4. From the wilderness to this place. I've given it to you. Verse 5. Beautiful. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee. I will not fail nor forsake thee. Wow. Now, be strong. Be strong. Yes. And of a good courage. So you see, be strong and of a good courage. For these people you divide for them the land. Wow. Verse 7. Only be strong. Be strong is twice. <laughs> you need strength. Yes. You need strength. Yes. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Meditation, meditation, Mr. 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 New appointee, meditation and implementation of the word of God, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. You know, one day, 
I was asking the Lord, how am I going to get money? I'll tell you a word of the Lord that they gave me. Do you want me to tell you the word of the Lord? Yes. He said to me, if you count your pennies, you'll be okay. It was in Kolegono. He, he whispered into my spirit, if you count your pennies, you'll be okay. That is why we count pennies. That is why we count pennies in the church. Every small one we like. Glory be to Jesus. That was the word he gave me. Have we been okay or we haven't been okay for the last 35 years? By the grace. Everybody say, my word is coming from the Lord. Psalm 105, verse 19. Beautiful. Until the time that his word came. You see, there is a word that is coming. Until the time. Let's read a little from, let's say, verse 15 or 14. So that you can understand. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sakes. Saying, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Verse 16. Moreover, he called for a famine on the land, and he broke the whole staff of bread. Verse 17. He sent a man to save Israel. He sent a man called Joseph, all right, who was sold for a servant. So Joseph was sold for a servant. Are you listening? Huh? Whose feet they had with fetters. Joseph was in prison and he was stuck in the mud. He was what? Stuck in the mud. No movement. He couldn't move. His life didn't move. Until what happened? Verse 19. Until the time that his word came. Word. Yes. Word from God. Word from God. That's all. When the word comes from your shepherd, Jesus, through his written word, through his words, through the spirit, when the time comes, his word comes, you're going to be, you're going to get out of any, where you are stuck. Huh? And just move forward until the time when his word came. Oh, I pray you get the word of the Lord. That's, that's it. That's it. Look, there is a word in every situation. It's you who have been found it. Yes, it's a word. It's a word. And you see, that's why you must be balanced in the word. Otherwise, the devil will use a word to make you go off into the deep end. Yeah. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So I want you to have Faith in the word. Like, whatever it is, it's something. If you like, you know, I know a church, when you come and see the pastor for counseling, they say, no, no, no. Sit in the church for six Sundays. If the topic that you are coming to see the pastor is not addressed within the six weeks, then you can come. And they never come because it is addressed. The word will come. Yes. <laughs> they, they don't do intimate counseling. <laughs> the word will come. Your marriage, your divorce, your issue with Moses, with Aaron, with Abraham, with his wife, second wife, child, this, stepchild. Oh, the word is there. The word is there. That's why the model marriage, you see everything... This topic, that top pregnancy, this stepchildren, this, it is all there and it's all based on the Bible. You only follow the things that are in the Bible. Yes. So, brothers and sisters, a great blessing and a great light 
You remember Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. They that sit in darkness have seen a great light. Yes, God is giving you a light for your life. A light for your life. Maybe you have stepchildren. You are so small. So you don't maybe you don't have stepchildren. But you see, a time may come you may have stepchildren. You may have two sets of children. One from the first wife, one from the second wife. Or a stray bullet. Yes. <laughs> there may be a stray bullet. Yes. And you may be wondering, what shall I do? It's the word, the word Abraham gave gifts to all the children and, and sent them away before he died. He said, all of you go. Then he gave, the Bible says he gave everything to Isaac. Amazing. Yeah. Those of you who leave your things for your children to fight over for the rest of their lives, read the Bible and see whether Abraham left things to fight over. Yes. Look at it, Genesis 25. No, no, start from verse 1. Then Abraham took a wife, Keturah, another wife. You see, you may not have expected it. This is not a stray bullet. This is it's, it's, it's a, it's a serious, it's, it's a machine gun. Because, because, look at the number of children. Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak. Abraham was strong, I tell you. That's an old man, he was strong. <laughs> Verse 3. And Jokshan begat Sheba and all these people. Verse 4. And the sons of Midian, all these were children of Keturah. Verse 5. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. Read the next verse. Read the next verse. To the other sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave them gifts and sent them away so that they don't fight with Isaac over anything. Yeah. He shared it to you. You, 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 you have all these things. Go, 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 go. Travel, travel tomorrow. Here's your ticket, train ticket, aeroplane ticket. Go, migrate. And then he gave everything else that he had to Isaac. It is guidance. Yeah. So many families, they leave that to sort out. You sort out yourselves. And they fight. Uh, it's deep. So there's guidance. It's the breakup of your relationship. Oh! Huh? It's the breakup of your relationship. Hmm? Where is the... Uh, 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 where is Danny boy? It's the breakup of my relationship. It's the breakup of my relationship. Mm, that's what's on my heart today. Oh, yes. Yay. You come to church and you hear this song. I cannot get over the feeling So many lessons I have learned I have learned that If you love, then you will give oh, yeah. And I have learned that If you love, you will communicate Communicate for your next relationship. It's a he word of the Lord. To me, if you love me, then you will smile at me. If you love me, you'll be full of life. If you love me, you will be cheerful around me. Cheerful around me. Please learn this lesson about love. I don't want you to feel the pain I feel. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Listen, oh, listen. Speaking. 
It's a breakup. My God. It's a broken heart once again. That means that it's not the first time it's happened. He said that I don't love him much. He said I don't love him. in love eh? she loved the man more than she loves God I'm telling you she loved the man more than God so when the breakup of the relationship comes it's very painful but many people don't know how to love it's not about just feeling the love in your heart tell me how People are just on their phones. Oh yes, it's called phone love. The love, the phone has taken over. Tonight, take a picture of your spouse in the house. You see that they are just on the phone like this. Sing it. You must learn how to communicate. feed everybody a word of the Lord to you this is a word of the Lord to you God is showing you you see there is always guidance everybody say guidance is it in Jamaica that they say guidance guidance man yeah we need guidance we need guidance we need guidance At every point in your life, what I shall do, what shall I do? And God gives you that guidance by the word of the Lord. 1 Samuel 3, 21. 1 Samuel 3, 21. And the Lord, and the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Did you understand that? God shows himself to you by the word. This song, 
I tell you, there are keys in it. Some of you, you see, it's not a breakup of relationship, but the failure to start. It's, it's, it, is called, it is called near success syndrome. Near success syndrome. Kalaba kabaroba labashana. It's the failure to start before it will even break. Failure to launch. Near success syndrome. You are nearly successful, but not successful. Ask your neighbor, are you suffering from near success syndrome? Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word today. We are grateful for the word of the Lord. I want everybody to speak to God and say, Lord, help me to fear the word of the Lord. Help me not to despise the word of the Lord. Help me to trust in the word of the Lord. Thank you for showing me the word in this darkness. Everyone speak to God by yourself. Jesus, touch my life. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you for the word of the Lord. 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 Oh, yes. We are grateful. In the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you want to give your life to God, to Jesus, and you want to trust in the word of the Lord, you want to say, Pastor, somebody invited me here. It's not my church, but somebody invited me. Maybe it's your church. And you came around. But today, you want to give your heart to God. I want to say, Jesus, change me. Save me. Change me. If you are here like that, just lift your hand at where you are standing. And I'm going to pray with you. Stand there, but lift up your hand high like this. God bless you. I see all your hands. Pastor, pray with me. I want, uh, I want to give my life and my heart to God. So that God will guide me. I want to be born again. Then lift your hand where you are standing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's a blessing today for you to receive Jesus as your Savior. Now, if you've lifted your hand like this, come to me with your hand lifted up. Hold your Bible or whatever and come. Don't leave your phone behind. But come from where you are with your hand like this. From upstairs. I see so many hands upstairs on all the balconies. Come, 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 come. Come to me in the front line here. I'm going to pray with you right here. If you lifted up your hand, come. God bless you. God bless you. Let's pray. Lift up your hands. Say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus. I can't hear you. All of you in front here, say, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I confess all my mistakes. Wash me, Lord Jesus, with your blood. Cleanse me 
from my wicked ways. From all my sins, forgive me, Lord. Today, say today, I receive Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. Please write my name in the book of life. I can't hear you say, please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Now lift up one hand like this. Say after me, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. In the name of Jesus, I reject you. Satan, I will not serve you again. I will not follow you again. I belong to God. I belong to Jesus. Jesus is my savior. Now everybody joining, wave your two hands to the Lord. Say thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Guys, thank you so much for watching the First Love Church YouTube channel. If you like this message, take a minute, click the subscribe button on your screen, and that way you won't miss a single message. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.